Hello, I'm David Cuthbert, and this is Conducting Light, a series of videos about stage lighting. Now, there are many important factors to consider when trying to light even a very simple stage production. To get to the conducting part of the operation, that is, the role of the lighting designer, there are many things we need to know about the spotlights, cabling, color, and some tricks of the trade. We'll cover many of these in this continuing series of videos on theater lighting. Part one shows basic stage lighting instruments and why we use different types of equipment to conduct light to the stage. Part two features lighting accessories, cable requirements, essential maintenance, a discussion on color media, area lighting, and safety. The Fresnel is one of the most widely used lights in theater, film, and television and it's relatively inexpensive compared to other lighting instruments on the market. Now the purposes of the Fresnel are simple. One, to provide a soft edge to its light beam output. Two, to diffuse or evenly spread the light across the field of the spot. And three, to provide a simple controllable mechanism to adjust the width and the intensity of the spot. Here's a bit of history on how the Fresnel was developed. Now, in the early days of electrical theater lighting, a simple metal box was made to house a powerful lamp. A simple reflector was put in the back of the box to help increase the amount of light going out the front. And a plano convex lens was used to gather up the light and direct it out the front of the box. Now this, the flat side of the lens, is called plano. And here's the curved side called convex. Plano, convex. The light from a lamp hits the lens and is bent or refracted to reshape it as it continues out the front. This produced a usable spotlight with an intense beam. And if you liked the hard edge at the outer area of the spot itself, then you liked this plano convex or box spot. Another industry also used the plano convex lens, lighthouses from around the world. Their lenses were much bigger, three feet in diameter and sometimes much larger. This made for a huge chunk of glass that was extremely heavy and when heated up by the lamp on a cold night, tended to break. A Frenchman, Auguste Fresnel, altered the convex side of the PC lens with concentric rings which kept the curving qualities of the convex lens. With this alteration, manufacturers reduced the weight of the plano convex lens, reduced the buildup of heat in the glass, and thus fixed the problem of all those broken lenses. Now this gave the light a soft quality around the edges of the spot. Add some pebbling or stippling on the back of the lens to help diffuse the beam, and you have the modern Fresnel lens. Theater lighting designers like this lighting instrument because it can easily be used with other Fresnels to blend together multiple lighting areas of the stage. Now let's open up a Fresnel and take a look inside. We'll see the Fresnel lens and a lamp and reflector, which are both connected to a sliding mechanism. All Fresnels have this movement pattern. Move the lamp and the reflector nearer the lens, and the light goes into a flood position and is quite wide. Move the mechanism further back from the lens, and the light goes into a spot position and is narrow. The relationship of the lamp and reflector to the lens gives the Fresnel its simple efficiency.